What up, K Rugs, the Sober Dog, coming at ya. Hey, if you like Sober Dog's content, help me get more of it out there, reach more people, hit that subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it. Share the videos, it'd be awesome. So, this coronavirus is going around, and one thing you you may have thought about, may not have thought about, but as a recovering addict, this is just naturally where my brain goes. I'm thinking about the implications on drug trade and the illegal drug trade and the end user being, you know, people like me who used to get high or the addicts out there still getting high. And some of the effects this is starting to have and is going to continue to, to have. So... Some people out there may not care about this. Uh, hopefully most of the people watching this are in recovery, but I know there's a lot of people still in active addiction or have friends and family in addiction or just curious about it. So, you know, that was something I did some research on. I, I put an article up on Sober Dogs today about, you know, how the coronavirus is affecting the drug trade. So what's happening and what's going to continue to happen at an increasing level is... So the, the virus started in China, you know, it's been called the Wuhan virus because uh, it started in Wuhan, China, um, China coronavirus, whatever, um, and branched out and pretty much now it's everywhere in the globe except, you know, Antarctica and a couple of minor places, but it probably will be. So in places, I live in New York, up Rochester, New York, not the city, and Places like New York, where I am, have put on a state of emergency. Uh, United States is in a state of emergency. Places like Italy are having lockdown, quarantine. Movement in general is being slowed down. Travel from anyone coming to the United States is not allowed to from Europe. They put that travel ban on for 30 days. There's similar bans in other countries, back and forth, things like that. What this is all doing is having an effect on general, per, you know, people traveling, cargo, movement in general, and just flights, ships, cars, everything. Now, there's a trickle up and trickle down effect. When the government puts their national emergency, people freak out lower on, you know, and vice versa, lower up you know, like let's say a restaurant closes, then another restaurant hears and they close and then more and more and more. So both those are hitting each other and now you got a lot of businesses closed, a lot of cruise liners closed, you know, airlines not doing nearly as many flights, things like that. The drug trade relies on all this. Drugs get into the country through, you know, cargo ships, shipping containers, flights, personal and you know, personal, private, domestic, international, all those flights. You know, obviously domestic would be drugs going from in the country to somewhere else in the country. But <clears throat> people coming over the border, uh, personal, just people walking over, people coming over in their own personal cars, 18-wheelers and cargo coming over the border, uh, boats, you know, personal boats, fishing boats, commercial boats. All these things are how the drugs get in. You know, hidden in these places, hidden in compartments, hidden in people's cars, hidden in someone's stomach, things like that. All this movement is being slowed down a little bit. You know, not completely, but lessened. Even if, even if there's just 20% less trucks coming over the U.S.-Mexico border, that's 20% less opportunity the cartels have to hide their drugs. Also, with that being said... If the Border Patrol doesn't have as busy and as much traffic as they usually do, they could take more time inspecting each car and truck, allowing them to do, you know, a more thorough job, which inevitably is going to lead to more busts. With that, you know, along those lines as well, when people come over the border, individual people, they get, you know, some type of general screening, you know, questions asked and, and, and things like that. With the virus, they're getting increased screening, mostly health stuff, but still increased. That might have a kind of undue consequence of somebody who normally would have an easier time bringing drugs in the country just on their, on their person or in their stomach. 
might now get caught because they have to do extra health tests or breathing tests or sit in a room longer. You know, you got 50 balloons of cocaine in your stomach and they tell you, you got to sit in a room for a day or a day and a half while they figure out your tests or what's going on. No, no, no. Those, those balloons break open, game over, you're done. Or you got to poop them out, you're going to get caught with them or whatever. You got to throw them up. So all these things could have little effects. Shipping as well. <clears throat> Not as many cargo ships. All these businesses around the country that are closing, less hours, making the workers work from home, they're not going to be ordering as much supplies and products as they usually do. Less cargo coming in from other countries, less cargo ships, less opportunity to hide drugs. All these things combined, even if not any one area doesn't shut down, but they all get affected a little bit, that's less drugs in general all coming into the country. Less drugs getting moved throughout the country and then less drugs and ending up at the final dealer, which means demand's going to go up, prices are going to go up, and the end user is going to end up paying more money to get less quantities of not as pure drugs because more people are, more dealers are going to be cutting it because they need to try to make some money back that they're losing. You know, this whole trade is going to get affected. Now, I'm hoping that people use this for good. If a, you know, an addict out there who over the next couple of weeks, the heroin in their city, they can't get it because people are running out. It's not coming over the border like it was, all these things. Hopefully this person takes some time to reflect while they're probably in withdrawal and say, maybe it's time for me to quit. You know, that would be awesome. But <clears throat> I also, being an ex-addict, understand that you could take, you know, the heroin away from a heroin addict for seven, eight, ten months, two years. <clears throat> if that person isn't doing a good recovery program of some type, they're going to start using again no matter what, as soon as they have the chance to. So... All these things in general, though, are going to affect it. And over the next coming weeks, it's going to get worse and worse for the end user. I'm kind of curious to see how this plays out. I, of course, don't wish anybody, you know, hurt or withdrawal or any of that, but it's going to happen. Something for people to think about, maybe potentially plan for. Uh, maybe the time to get sober, you know, please do it. There is recovery. There is ways out there to get sober uh, for many people. And, <clears throat> you know, another thing along these lines that people don't think about that will be affected is take, for example, here in New York where I live, anybody over 18 can walk into a pharmacy and buy needles. Uh, they'll sell you clean needles. You know, people need them for insulin, diabetes, for other medications, you know, things like that. But drug addicts can also do that. People are panic buying because they don't know what's going to happen. So people who really need the needles like diabetics and stuff are buying 10, 12, 15 times what they usually get. Leaving less for drug addicts who want to buy them. Now... Many people out there say, well, they shouldn't be selling drug addicts needles anyway. It's enabling them. Yeah, you're enabling them to an extent, but it's still the right thing to do. Here's why. There's not a drug addict on this planet that is going to say, oh, I can't get clean needles today. I might as well stop using. Doesn't work like that. Will never work like that. They'll reuse needles and they'll, and they'll start sharing needles. What happens when that happens? happens is more disease and infection gets passed around the drug community. Now, I've heard some really insensitive statements where people say, well, you know, let them wipe themselves out. That's awful. I hate when people say that. I was one of those people and now I'm in recovery and there's tons of them. Your next door neighbor could be your kids, could be you. But the other reason, even as awful as that statement is, it's not like the drug community just stays within themselves and that's it. People who are addicts have relationships, sex, date, are married to people in the regular community, work in the regular community, have friends and family in the regular community. So if more drug addicts are getting hep C and HIV because they can't get clean needles, 
that's going to get spread to the community as a whole because they're still having sex with regular people in the community. They're still working at regular places where there's injuries, where people, you know, hook up, where people talk, all these. I work at a restaurant, people cut themselves by mistake. You know, that can happen because of my ability to buy clean needles. I never got anything. I've been tested multiple times and I avoided hep C, HIV, all those things because I could always walk in a pharmacy and get clean needles. Now I'm in recovery in the community. I date, you know, I, I have relationships with, with girls, you know, I'm at a restaurant. If I had one of those diseases because people say you shouldn't give addicts clean needles, now that I'm in recovery, I would theoretically be spreading that. So selling or giving addicts clean needles is actually a good thing to do. But that's another supply that's being bought and up extra and not as much coming in from other countries because that's where a lot of it is made. All these little things are going to have little impacts here and there on the general drug trade uh, because of this coronavirus. Again, some of it, hopefully they'll be good to come out of it in the end. Some of it might not be, but supply is going to go down and demand is going to go up in general and there could be many, you know, addicts out there not getting what they want or need. And when addicts, you specifically, you know, harder, obviously the hard drugs, heroin, cocaine, meth, when they're not getting what they want or need, they can get, you know, desperate in a lot of cases. And that's not good. That's where there's more crime, potentially violence. Um, how to solve this, fix it, work with it, I don't have the slightest idea. Uh, but I, what I will say to anyone out there, again, with addiction, maybe use this as a time to, you know, get sober. This is the perfect time because you, your addiction is going to get really expensive and harder to get in the next upcoming weeks. So to get more drugs. All right, K-Rugs, that's how the drug trade is going to affect, or the coronavirus is going to affect the drug trade. Uh, again, hit that subscribe button. Let me know what you think in the comments. If there's anything else you could think about that's going to be affected in these next upcoming weeks. It's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out. Wish everyone stay healthy, stay safe out there. See ya.